what I say is just like, could we, you just, no, no, because no, I don't know how you're going to cut okay. this. Yeah. What is it? So restate what you think was what just Mpo, said. What Mpo has just stated to you, that the narrative that you gave inside, it's different from what the minister has said in relation to the investigation itself. I said my conclusions from this press conference is that everything I say in the film was sustained, that the minister knew Hank Heslinger, knew of these investigations, probably initiated them considering that it was such an enormous investigation, that it was incredibly costly, that it was cross-frontier investigation, that it lasted several months. Um, he sustained all of that. But so I think this was organized to discredit my film entirely. I mean, I haven't read these notes yet, but it seemed to me that this was a sort of a, 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 a condemnation. I wasn't going to be here, of course. I came at the last just, minute. Just, just before we come into mm. you thinking that you've been discredited. Well, no, the film has been discredited. The, the film has been discredited, but yeah, you the producer the of the film. That's right. That there's a dis did yeah. you ever think about it when you did it without consulting those who were involved, without getting their comment? Did I ever think about yeah, the story? That you did, yes. I was making an entire film about very secret things that were an entire, a very n a number of different operations that were conducted to discredit Winnie Mandela. Okay. Now I don't think the film is discredited in any way by what was uh, what we learned in this press conference. I think the former minister confirmed everything that was in the film. And also some of what wasn't in the film, because you also confirmed that Jerry Richardson was paid money whilst he was in jail um, by the police service, you know, for information that he was giving about Winnie Mandela. So this doesn't contradict the fact that there was an enormous investigation into allegations against Winnie Mandela in 1995. Again, that reopened all sorts of things that had been tried in court before. And at her appeal, after the, the court case that alleged that she'd been involved in kidnapping, etc., at that appeal, that her appeal was sustained. So thereafter, in 1995, why was there this enormous investigation into Winnie Mandela? And then why was it that at the TRC, she faced charges that were effectively criminal charges that she was not in a position to defend herself from? Did so you, you have to tie these things together. Much as you and do this that. This is the story. This is the importance, and this is the history that needs to be investigated by all of you journalists and all of you South Africans. You need to dig deep into this. The That's history all. that needs to be investigated also has to be balanced. Did you go to Minister Mafumadi to get this comment? No, I didn't, and I apologize Why? to him in this. In this, because did, there was. Did you have to wait for the press conference to apologize to you? No, but my film was finished in January 2017. It was shown in June 2017. There was an ANC minister in the screening with Mama Winnie and a huge full audience in June 2017. Why was that not brought up at that point? Why did, why wasn't someone not brought, to, why was this not brought to my attention then? Why did this not become a big press issue then? Why has it become a press issue now? I mean, this is the thing. There are lots of things going backwards and forwards. And the, but the point is, you know, is this film a credible film? Is it an important story to, to bring out in South Africa today? Is it something that people need to answer for? Is it something that initiates discussion into a very critical period of your history from 1984 to 1997 or not? And I believe that it is. But it is your job not to discredit the film or discredit me, but to go and investigate for your own satisfactions whether whether this 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 important film that gives you all kinds of insights into all sorts of ways in which Winnie Mandela was demonized criminalized etc it deserves an airing and deserves a discussion in South Africa today I believe it does it does but the sentiment that it cost pain to many South Africans well I you know I of course th this entire period was Horrendous. So there's no doubt the most violent. I mean, we're talking about apartheid. We're talking about the most terrifying and terrible socially engineered oppressive regime in history. Okay, there's no doubt about it. That was long lasting and that was sustained by the British government and the Americans, etc, etc. We know that. What we don't know is just how effective it was in demonizing Winnie Mandela. And what my 
concerns. What troubled me was that when I traveled in the world, everywhere I went, everybody thought that Winnie Mandela, who was so loved and respected in this country by such a large mass of South Africans, everybody on the outside thought that she was a murderer, that she was corrupt, that she was, I mean, the, 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 the list of charges against her were, was, as, is so long and you can check most of the obituaries internationally that have come out and they all say, oh, well, she was sort of loved by her people, but she was, you know, she was, a, she was bad. She was, she was, she dealt in, in murder, in kidnapping and all of these sorts of things. So the film is the first offering to begin to counter that narrative. And in that film, you, 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 you're, you are given the opportunity for the first time to listen to the director of Stratcom, who speaks for the first time and explains exactly what that psychological warfare involved and how they targeted Winnie and how effective it was generally and how they controlled the media in many ways and how they produced films that, that they sold to stations all over the US and that were disseminated in the, in, in the world. And in my view, it's of public interest to know that this, this happened to counter somewhat all the other narrative, which is very well known in the world and which is constantly reiterated, reproduced um, and without any investigation. So I think the film has, of course, unsettled the waters, created debate, brought up all kinds of painful issues, etc. There have been all kinds of unforeseen consequences, of course. I mean, you don't, you don't set out to try and make a film that tries to tell some truth that hasn't been told before without uh, expect, you know, did I expect that there to be such a huge reaction? No, I didn't. And, and, I, and, I, and I think that if the film had gone out when it was first presented, after it was first presented in South Africa, which was in June 2017, it might have gone out on SABC, etc. Maybe there wouldn't have been such an enormous um, response. I think the enormous response is because everybody's very emotional um, uh, about the passing of Mama Winnie, of course. It's a huge event, and and the battle um, about her legacy is a, is a is a really is is a really significant one. Thank you. That's Pascal Lampsha, who's behind the movie or the, the 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 documentary that has been playing, and for now it's back to you in the studio. Thank you very much for giving us the, um, uh, the views there of the producer and somewhat of the backlash that she seemed to have uh, gotten upon releasing the movie only now, mentioning that uh, that uh, Winnie Madikizela documentary was actually made last year in January and then aired for the first time in June 2017. Uh, for the first time, we're actually hearing a live a recount as to why she actually made the movie and uh, what she sees the significance behind that. Uh, let's have a look now at uh, some other news. The Anglo-American South Africa, in conjunction with the Department of Basic Education,